<sighs> How are you doing with the changes in the world right now? You know, I, I noticed for myself in the last couple of weeks, I had quite a few days of resistance around everything that was going on. I had quite, quite a few days of heartbreak about what I'm seeing, feeling, observing in the world. Um, and I think the one thing that I wanted to address today, and this is something that the Z's have kind of helped me with personally when I've just tuned in to them for personal guidance, is they have talked about the disorientation of this time as a theme. And even though many of us might complain about the disorientation of this time or the divisiveness that we're seeing, they will say this is, this is the design of this time, that we are supposed to be pulled out of our patterns, our identities, everything that was known. And there is this very intense underground energy that's moving. And, and I say underground because so much of what we're seeing in the world, so much of what we're seeing shared, reported, whether that's by news outlets or by people on the street, is just scratching the surface of what's really going on. And I'm not withholding anything from you when I say that. This is me directly relaying messages from them that, you know, they say over the next three to five years, we're going to go through a, a very rapid period of um, illumination. And for want of a better term, it's a little too earthly, but it's the best thing I can think of, truth telling about things that we haven't been privy to or haven't known. And I know many of you uh, follow these things. The, the one thing that I would say about all of it that they have cautioned me against many times, and it has helped me stay balanced, is they have said, be very wary of believing anything 100%. Because they said there's truth, there's truth in everything. Some things will have more truth than others, but it's really about where you discern your truth to be. So if you're told one story by one person and they're telling you it like it's the truth, like it's fact, like it's the only truth, and then over here you've got someone else telling you an absolute truth, and you can kind of connect with both of their opinions, there's truth in both of it. The, the difference is that their stance is very stance-based. And your truth might be, well, I can see some truth in that and I can see some truth in that. But for those of you that can connect with the truth in the many, you'll find it very debilitating to be in a fight. You'll find it very debilitating to be someone who is standing and fighting. There are other people who are designed for the fight. There are people who are designed to be fiery warriors and you might be one of those watching you might be i am here for the fight i am here to be the truth teller i'm here to go out there and crusade and that's great but what i'm what i have been getting a lot for our community is that's not really the main makeup of everybody who's here so it doesn't mean that you aren't for the truth against lies or darkness or any of that stuff but it means that the way that you're holding space for it and the way that you want to be part of that transformation might look different to some of the loudest voices out there. And the message is that that's okay. You can only be who you are at this time in the world. The other thing is that things are moving so fast on the planet that some of you might be feeling this, oh, I should be getting behind this or I should be doing something about this. And then all of a sudden there's something else on the left. And that also is the nature of this time. Things are spinning very fast and a lot that has been hidden is rising to the surface, but it's more than one thing. It's more than one truth. It's more than one area that is going through a healing. So for most of us, the overstimulation of that can very easily knock us off balance. And certainly the word balance is not something I'm seeing a lot when I look into the outer world. So it's interesting, the Z's have been saying this for years and I feel like I'm now getting to experience what they've been forecasting for years at a more human level than I ever did before or I ever fully understood. 
I'm very specifically remembering London 2017. It was January. I'm pretty sure it was 2017 or was it 2016? It was one of those years. And they basically said, you're about to go into a period of your history that will last around seven years that will be intense and that will see a lot thrown up and there will be a lot of chaos. If you try and make the chaos stop, you will suffer. If you try and make the outer chaos of the world stop, you will suffer. If you are in constant inner reaction to the chaos in the outer world, that you don't like it, you want it to go away, you want it to stop, you want it to heal, you will suffer. They said you're going to need to find your people, your senses of purpose, and your places during this time. They specifically said, find your lighthouses during these stormy years to come. Now at the time, you know, I remember thinking the world didn't feel amazing. You know, if, if you looked at the outer world, it was like, okay, there's a lot of turbulence, but now I think I understand it more. And the place I keep coming back to in myself when I don't feel capable of being part of a solution for one individual or for the world at large or putting my energy towards something that might have more light or more positivity than what I'm seeing in the world is I have to go inward and I have to reset and I have to run some checks and balances on have I got enough of the things that I need around me? And those needs are really quite um, fundamental. They're not really things as much as they are knowing what soothes me, knowing what slows me down, knowing what helps me come back to center. And sometimes that looks like, and I did this the other day when I was having, I was having a rough couple of days and uh, I just took myself to bed. It was like 5 30, 6 o'clock. I just took myself to bed and I went to sleep for an hour and a half and I woke up and it was a little better. And then I kind of went to bed again a few hours later. I really like bed, by the way. Bed is one of my safe places. Like, um, you know, go and, go and get into bed, pull the covers up. And then at a certain point, you, you get out of bed again. And I actually have, um, I actually have a sign that I bought that I really liked because it felt very true for me. It said, let him sleep for when he wakes, he will move mountains. Um, and I bought it many years ago because I felt like it was a good reminder to me that sleep to me is such a place of renewal and reset. And it's also the place that I, I go to recharge and a lot happens to me in my, in my dreams and when I'm asleep. So the reason I share that with you guys is the tumultuous energies. I know in our spiritual community, there can sometimes be this unwritten rule or idea that if you're off balance, you're failing or you're, I would argue, I think if you aren't having off balance moments right now, you're either in an extraordinary period of awakening, you know, that, that period of awakening where you're just kind of lifted out of earthly density and that can last months for some people. And that's great. Um, or you're managing to stay out of your body in one way or another, and that may or may not be good for you. So you might just want to check that because when we leave our body for too long, whether it's through addiction or um, we hook out because of trauma we can't deal with, that can, have, that can have its own kind of consequences many months after we've, after we've escaped our body in that way. But the reason I bring this up is to remind you that it's, it's part of the process. It's part of this process of disorientation, the chaos, the Z's keep saying, the chaos of this time is exactly how it needs to be because you cannot get to where you want to go to as a society, as a world, without going through this chaos. Even though it's uncomfortable to our identity, to our habits, to our sense of safety and comfort, which is very important to us as human beings, comfort and safety are kind of programmed into us, like wired into us as things that we need to seek and look for. 
So it's not that we can't find those things right now, but it's that we're being asked to find them differently. And I know I'm speaking to the converted, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, I think we're all very aware that nothing feels quite like it did. But the message that they have given me is, and this is a message I have to relay to you, is to find your new normal. So for those of you who are feeling purposeless at the moment, and we have many people in our lives right now who, for example, have lost work, lost jobs, lost loved ones. I mean, you know, the, the loss list is high. Um, it is often uncomfortable at the beginning. It's not usually that you lose things that you were either relying on or connected to and immediately rebirth. You usually have to go through a bit of a grieving period or a loss period or a disorientation period before you transform and rebirth into something else. So that's the same energy that I'm speaking of for all of us. We, we as a macro world are going through that grief and loss period before a bigger transformation as a world. And then many people in your life or you yourself might be going through that very direct loss before transformation and before something new appears that's really strong for you. So I share all of this not to paint an overly negative picture. Um, a relative of mine um, who, whose wife died with three weeks notice, um, my aunt actually, um, in 2018, um, he just got remarried um, about three weeks ago. So two and a half years after the sudden death of his wife, he just got remarried um, in his 70s and they found each other. And, and it was just so heartwarming to me to get those photos a week ago in this time of huge, you know, so much loss so much change, but at the same time, it was just a reminder to me that, you know, you never, you never know what new chapter can open for you and at what time. So if you're hopeless, find the things that will stabilize you. Get stable first. Hopelessness, what we have to do is get back to kind of a zero point, a neutral. Do those things like go to bed and pull the covers over your head if that's what you need to do. Let yourself be where you are. Try not to fight the chaos in the outer world. It's like anything, when we fight, everything takes longer. Like I know for me, when I accept <laughs> what I'm struggling with, the thing I'm struggling with starts to dissolve very fast. When I'm fighting what I'm struggling with, it takes longer, of course, because I have a lesson to learn in that. And the lesson isn't that I need to be punished. It's just that I need to be able to quickly accept this thing. But that doesn't take away from any grief, anger, anguish that I might need to release as I get there. I think we so often demonize those tough feelings. And as a society, I know you, you guys here probably don't do that. And I know for me, that has been the making of me, allowing all the feelings. And this is something I've alluded to in many energy updates, but the level of feeling on planet Earth right now is higher than I've ever seen it in my lifetime. The level of feeling on planet Earth right now is higher than I've ever seen it in my lifetime. And there are two types of feelings, or as many types of feelings, but I'm going to put them into two categories for the purpose of what I'm pointing out here. There are what we would call conscious feelings. So feelings we're aware of and that we're conscious of. And so we kind of hold space for them. You know, it's the difference. If it's a tough feeling, it's the difference between me sitting here crying on camera to you about my upset or me being able to be upset and say, Hey, everyone, I'm, I'm a bit upset right now. You know, I'm one I'm holding and the other one I'm kind of vomiting out into the air and into the room not, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. That happens. We've all done it. We've all been there. But what we're seeing right now on the planet is the conscious and the unconscious feelings up like a storm. So people are putting incredibly strong levels of feeling behind their opinions, 
their ideas, their beliefs. And that's partly why we're seeing so much division. There is also just an anxiety on the planet that's high. You know, a lot of people thinking, well, how is the future going to be? And how are we going to figure this out? And look at the climate and look at the political situation. There's a lot of unease and there's a lot of dis-ease. And so when you're as sensitive as you are, as we are, and as many on the planet are, whether they've realized that about themselves yet or whether they're in the process of coming to realize that, that emotional frequency is like music that we hear. It's in the air, it's in the room. It might not be heard by everybody to the same degree it's heard by you. And it might be heard by a friend of yours at a higher degree than you're hearing it. But it's in the air and it's in the room. So the question I have for you before we go to your questions and the question for you to consider in the coming weeks and months is how am I navigating? And you may even feel like writing this down or something like this. How am I navigating the higher level of feeling on the planet? And if you want to, you can put in brackets conscious and underlined unconscious because conscious feelings. I don't know about you. I'm great with conscious feelings. <laughs> like someone coming up to me going, I'm having a really bad day. Great. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's work with it. Or someone coming up to me consciously loving. I just want to give you a hug. That's all good. Unconscious feelings. You know, if, if it's tricky, because if you can't help somebody who is emitting unconscious feelings, either become conscious about those feelings or balance those feelings. You're either on the receiving end of them, you're either being attacked by them, or you're very aware of how big they are broadcasting that feeling into your orbit, into the orbit of the room, and, and how it can disrupt things how it can disrupt things because what they're trying to do is get the feelings out of them. And really what we have to do is get the feelings through, you know, our, our feelings transmute when we stay in our vertical line. So our vertical line is the energy thread that connects us to the universe down through the spine into the earth. And we can really release and transmute our feelings when we know that our feelings have to stay to some degree in us until they leave. They have to leave through us. They don't leave because we scream at another person to get rid of our anger. That gives us a five minute endorphin rush. It gives us, to some people, it gives them a 10 minute high because they're addicted to their anger and they're addicted to using their anger in aggressive ways at others to try and get rid of it. It's like, it's like thinking that three glasses of wine a night it's going to be how you experience happiness. You might experience happiness for a short period of time, but then there's going to be a deficit on the way down. And also the, there, there might be other problems with your body over time. So how am I navigating the higher level of feeling or emotion in the world right now? Brackets, conscious and un conscious. The reason I ask you to remember that is I've noticed for myself in the times that I've forgotten how big everything is in the world, I've done that thing we can all do, which is I've made it just about me and just about my problem where I've gone, oh, well, I must just be very stressed because of X, Y, and Z that's going on or this that just impacted me with my family member or, and, and actually what I've found every time is when I connect out and go, oh, wow, this is, this is far beyond me, my immediate life, my immediate community. This is worldwide. It has helped me reset very fast. So just having that question in your mind, in your awareness in the coming weeks might be useful. Hi, you've been watching an extract from one of my monthly broadcasts for our portal community, The Energy Tune-Up. Every month I do them for 90 minutes and I also take questions both 
from my own vantage point as an energy intuitive. And then I channel my guides the Zs and they interact with the questions in our community. So here is a little glimpse into what you experience as a portal member in case you wanted to consider trying it out for a month and seeing if it's for you. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to The Portal. The Portal is my monthly members community and we have been going for almost eight years. Some have called it a sanctuary for sensitives. It's a place where I get to offer you tools to help you thrive, survive and expand your life. So every month I get to bring in-depth teaching, specially curated content and we do all of this in a private community. Over the years, my energy updates have become popular, but the thing about reading for everybody and the amount of people who tune into those now is we don't always necessarily get to specify. Every month, I do a 90-minute live broadcast, which is archived and available for replays for many months afterwards, where not only do I do an in-depth energy read for the Portal member community, I also take live questions, so we have some pre-submitted questions, but we have a lot of live on-air questions. I stopped doing personal sessions a couple of years ago, so this is a great way to get your question answered, but also through this curated questioning, we get to uplift as a community because the thoughts, the concerns, the hopes that are on the community's mind get looked at and the energy tune-up becomes a healing call as a result. Secondly, you will receive that month's latest MP3. Every single month, we create a brand new MP3 that is usually a channel from my guides, the Zs, with sound healing and often with an original song at the end, which I create in collaboration with Slovenian sound healer and composer Davor Bozik. These MP3s are designed to support you with what's going on in current energies and essentially to be an hour of audio medicine that you can listen to that month and forever in the future. Many people revisit these MP3s time and time again. We also have a classics library, eight of my past titles that are favorites that rotate every five months so that you get to go deeper with some recordings you may have otherwise missed or not been able to find in the past. Stephen Washington, my husband, delivers Qigong videos and teaching every single month that's exclusive to those of you in the portal. He creates a Qigong sequence that he bases on the themes of that month's energy update. Usually this is around 30 minutes long and it remains in the portal as an archive for a full year after its first broadcast. So you immediately have access to 12 Qigong sequences on video from Stephen. Stephen also creates a short meditation every single month. These are around seven, eight minutes long because I wanted them to be short enough for you to use very easily. And he has created these with Davor Bozik. As a welcome bonus gift when you join the portal, you will find Intuitive Power, the full video recording of our one day event in London that kicked off our Intuitive Power tour. It's approximately five hours. It features myself and Stephen. If you've never been able to get to a live event, it's a great way to experience the live energy in the room and also learn some things about intuition, your body and wellness along the way. And finally, my favorite thing is our Facebook community. Our Facebook community is a private group, so it allows people to have discussions, engage with each other and support each other in the privacy of a contained group. So along with special discounts for Portal members, we manage to bring all of this to you at an incredibly affordable fee every month. So if you want to try the portal, see if it resonates with you for a month, we would love to have you join us, try it out, and we hope you stay because we love serving our members and we love curating and creating the portal every single month. <music>